A very good afternoon to everyone and welcome to this afternoon's discussion program where we talk about a number of social issues. I am Tiana Jordan and I am the Advocacy and Communications Officer here at Chilink Guyana. This afternoon our discussion will be focused on a very important topic and that is none other than sex and gender. This afternoon's discussion is possible because of our 1000 Boys initiative which is funded by the delegation of the European Union here in Guyana. And this afternoon I'm joined by two teen advocates Two beautiful young ladies. A very good afternoon to you. It is great to have you here this afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you for having and, us here. And how are you ladies doing this afternoon? I'm great. That's good to know. I'm really looking forward to hearing your views on today's topic. I'm sure uh, we'll, learn a, we'll learn a lot this afternoon from you ladies. So let's get right into it. Um, for those who are not familiar with you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, I'm Priyanka Hudson. I'm 17 years old and I am the co-founder of a youth advocacy group called Youths Breaking Boundaries. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Athal Sehat. I'm currently a student at Queen's College, and I'm also founding Youth Breaking Boundaries with uh, Priyanka Hudson. It is great to see you ladies uh, doing such great work when it comes to uh, advocacy work. Um, today's topic, like I mentioned before, is sex and gender, and a lot of people don't really know the difference between these two terms. I want to hear from you uh, in your own words. Can you describe what these two terms mean and the difference between the two? Um, okay. In my um, opinion, you go. Go ahead, okay. man. So, yeah. So in my opinion, sex is the biological, um, what you were characterized with at birth. So um, it deals with more of, so the reproductive organ that you were born with, and that would be your sex. But I feel that your gender is what you feel or what you feel possesses exactly how you feel. So a lot of people may be biologically female, but may feel like if they're, they more feel like a male or so forth, and that would be more gender. It's more about how you feel as a person based on personality traits, different social factors, etc. And in my opinion, sex is what you are biologically created with. So the biological attributes of a male and a female, whilst gender is more of what you identify with. For example, there's a male and female or non-binary. Thanks for sharing sharing it in such simple terms i'm sure everyone was able to understand you know uh, when it comes to sex it's dealing with the genital parts and gender is more uh, of dealing with what's on the inside um when having these conversations about sex and gender and so on it is most times difficult to talk about gender identity which is something many of many persons tend to stay away from I want to know what does gender identity mean to you ladies? Gender identity to me is how I identify. I am feminine, I'm female, I like girly things. And so my gender identity is a woman, a feminine woman. And so I lean more to being feminine. I care about my looks, my hair, how I present myself. So that's what it means to me. Um, like Priyanka stated, I also identify as a woman and it's basically based on where I characterize myself based on things that I like to do. As stated prior, stated that um, gender is basically how you feel. And as she stated, I also feel like a female based on the things that I present myself to be. But not because I like female things it doesn't mean that if I liked male things as well, it means that I'm a female because I was biologically born female. I also believe that if I felt like if I was a boy in that moment, I could also be a boy. Yes, definitely. And, you know, in today's society, uh, we don't have just male and female anymore and so on. They're, you know, persons who identify as other genders. Uh, why is it important for us to understand the term gender identity? Understanding so, the term. Go ahead, Priyanka. Okay. Um, understanding the term gender identity would mean understanding yourself. 
And so I think it is important, important to understand your gender identity so that you're able to express yourself in however you feel suits you and so that you're able to present yourself so that everyone else knows what you identify as or everyone else can pick up on who you are as a person. Um, in my opinion, I think that gender identity is important because if you do not know who you are as a person, it could lead to many insecurities, it could lead to bullying and those sorts of things. So to me, gender um, identity is important because it could lead to you having some sort of gender identity crisis. But once you know who you are as a person, um, it is quite easy for you to um, face those sorts of discriminations that one may face on a daily basis. That's right. And you know, when we understand the term gender identity also, we'll also be able to better understand other persons and you know, what they identify as so that we may be able to treat them correctly. And uh, I want to know, you know, uh, when we are born, we are assigned a specific, uh, we are assigned a specific gender, which is either we are uh, referred to as either male or female because of our sex. And, um, you know, as we grow older, there are certain behaviors that are expected of us, expected of us uh, based on these genders. So as girls, can you share some of the expected behaviors with us that, you know, growing up, what were expected of you because, you know, you're a girl? Growing up as a female, a girl, a woman, you're expected to be polite, modest, have this warm aura, this caring, nurturing kind of vibe. And sometimes when you don't fall into that standard, there's so much that is put onto you and everyone is looking at you and judging you. And that can be very, very hard and problematic as you get older because it can confuse you sometimes. Okay. Um, uh, in my opinion, I fully support every um, statement that Priyanka have stated. I think a lot of pressure is put on us females with being modest. If we were too loud, um, it could tend to have some sort of effect. So I fully agree with the stigmas and stuff that we have to uphold as females in society. Definitely. And uh, when it comes to, you know, how females are expected to behave and boys are expected to behave, uh, how do you feel about this? You know, boys are expected to behave a certain way. They are um, nurtured to be more, uh, how to put it? They are nurtured to be strong. They are nurtured to not show emotions and so on. What are your thoughts on this? I think that it can be very problematic to raise boys telling them, oh, don't cry because that's a sign of weakness or males don't show emotion because then they get older, they have all these issues and they internalize it. And then sometimes all of that, they tend to expel upon their partner and that can be problematic in their future relationships. And with women, we teach them they must be nurturing, they must um, learn to cook, they must learn to clean. And we don't really teach them anything beyond that within our society, usually. And that can also be very problematic because you're teaching them to refine themselves or marginalize themselves into this box and not to expand themselves as a person. Um, I'm full agreement with what Priyanka stated. I think, as she stated, it is very problematic for males to have <clears throat> this um, area in which they think that they are not allowed to express their emotions because it shows some sort of weakness. And I think eventually it causes them to some in some way break down. I strongly believe that emotional pain is much more stronger than physical pain. And I think if these males are not allowed to express their emotions, it can lead to problems in their relationships a great amount. And I think also with females, I think that our identity is not in what we can do in terms of cooking or cleaning in a home, but I think it's more so in who we are as women and not what we can do for either ourselves or a man or whatever society puts us to have. Yes, you're right. And when it comes to these stereotypes and stigmas and so on, uh, a lot of changes need to be done. What are some of the changes or what do you think as young women, you're both uh, youth advocates, uh, what do you think young people can do to change this? 
Um, personally, I think a lot of young people um, could, what they can do to change this is that they can start basically accepting the changes. I think a lot of people are reluctant to these different changes and a lot of them are stuck in the traditional mindset of what men and women should do but when we understand that we our worth is not in what we can do but our worth is who we are as a person i think once youth youth start to understand that it will better be able to change so anyway through some sort of campaign through youth advocate programs just like how we're talking on tv or so forth it can cause um individuals to start to change just posting on social media being comfortable to express your true self can eventually allow our world to change in a way that will allow us to accept these changes yeah i i agree completely i think um our people our society needs to start accepting the changes because we live in this little bubble where we're still traditional and we still hold on to our old values and a lot of us are so so reluctant to change but this is the 21st century and times have changed and it's time we accept that and it's time we stop marginalizing our boys our girls and stop putting them in this box and allow them to express themselves and then we can all start joining the progressive society both of you made some great points there. I also want to know um, if a child or if, uh, yeah, if a child, a teenager, uh, you know, realizes that they don't want to identify as either male or female and what they want to talk to their parents about it and so on. What advice would you give to that parent? How, what can they do so, you know, ensure that your child feels comfortable with talking about their gender identity and so on. Um, I would advise parents to do more research, to practice open mindedness, um, because you want your child to feel comfortable with you. You want them to share all the parts of them with you, whether they think it's strange or not. And yeah, you should practice open mindedness. You should do your research. You should ensure that they're the most comfortable with you as possible. And overall, you should just love them unconditionally, no matter what the case is. Um, I agree 100% with what Priyanka stated. Love is something that a lot of people in these sorts of communities feel that they lack, and that's exactly why they don't feel comfortable going to parents. So first of all, creating an environment in which children feel safe, I think is one of the first steps. And I think also when the child is opening up to you, whether you agree or disagree, I think it's important to pay the child a listening ears. Even if you do not agree, it's a judgment-free zone. And even if you have maybe different religious beliefs or you know that opposes you to see eye to eye with the child i think it's still important to listen and afterwards as priyanka stated you can do your different research but once that child does not feel comfortable coming to you then problem or they will not be able to freely express themselves so i think it's important as parents to love and to listen the two else yes i think you know uh, Guyanese parents especially they sometimes they tend to just tell tell their children that you know just shut their mouth or they don't want to listen to what they have to say so listening is important listening to your child uh, giving them advice you know so that they may feel comfortable with expressing themselves expressing their feelings expressing whatever problems they're going through and so on and also research like Priyanka mentioned is very important when it comes to topics like this. Um, is there anything else you ladies would like to add before we close up for this afternoon? Um, once again, I think it's very important that we um, bring ourselves up to the level of the progressiveness of the world. And I think it's important that we practice open-mindedness and we love and accept the people around us because without the people around us, we wouldn't be here. Um, I 100% agree with Priyanka. I think it's important, but I think that everyone should take away from today's discussion is that we can love everyone unconditionally, despite your differences, maybe in race, and um, as this topic could be in gender and sexes. It's a lot to deal with, and I guess it's a lot for traditional parents to observe, but I think it's just important for us to love and accept everyone, and eventually the world will change for a better way. 
Thank you very much for such uh, wonderful advice. And thank you for taking the time out to come here this afternoon to share uh, your views on today's topic, sex and gender. I want to encourage you to continue doing the work you've been doing and being a voice for other young people out there. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. With that being said, I want to thank everyone for tuning in this afternoon and watching our discussion. I do hope that you learned a lot. Well, I'm sure that you learned a lot from today's discussion because I did. And of course, uh, I do hope that you enjoy the rest of your day and do join us next time.